In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the Sega Model 2 emulator absolutely perfectly set up using my pre-configuration. The Sega Model 2 emulator, being an arcade emulator, can be a little bit tricky to get set up, especially with its controls. And there's quite a few things that can be missed that actually enhance the experience. As is the case with most arcade emulators, some of these games have issues that need specific workarounds that unless you know what you're doing are easily missed. So these things combined with the amount of time it takes to get a perfect setup doesn't really make for a very quick or easy end user experience. And that is what I intend to change. I'm setting these emulators up as perfectly as possible, pre-configuring everything and testing and bringing a plug and play experience to you, the end user. So essentially, I spend hours doing this so you don't have to. I also like to enhance these games as standard wherever possible. And in the case of Sega Model 2, House of the Dead, Virtual Cop 1 and 2 have had their screen flashes removed with Lua scripts. So when you pull the trigger, you will no longer get the white flash on screen. I'm also providing Lua scripts to unlock true anamorphic widescreen if you wish to do so. And all the footage you've seen in today's video has been captured with those used. Let's get everything set up. Now, thanks to everything being pre-configured, the setup time is now five minutes, not an hour plus. So just bring yourself over to this LaunchBox forum page here. The link will be in the description below. And we're just gonna scroll down to the instructions. It is super simple. And I'm gonna be taking you through these step by step. So to download the Model 2 emulator, just bring yourself over to this GitHub page here. I'll pop the link in the description below. And then just click Downloads or scroll down. And we want to download the most recent one, which is 1.1a. So click that and download that to your most convenient place. I'm just gonna download it to my desktop so I can demo. Once you've got that downloaded, just right click on it and unzip it. There we go. Just gonna bring that over here and open it up. Now, before we do anything else, we need to add all of the pre-configured files to get this working perfectly. So just bring yourself back to the LaunchBox forum page and hit download this file. And for the moment, we just want to download the Sega Model 2 emulator pre-config files. So download those and make sure you give that an unzip. There we go. Let's bring that over here and open it up. And we want to bring over all of these files and put them into the Model 2 root folder and replace any files that are already there. There we go. So I just want to cover ROMs very quickly. Now with my pre-configuration, if you create a ROMs folder in exactly the same way as I've done here and have all of your ROMs located within, you won't need to manually set your ROMs path. But if you have your ROMs in any other location, you will need to manually do that. And it's really easy to do so. I'm gonna show you now. So all you need to do is click there, press Control C to copy. Let's come back out. Go into the emulator any file and you want to paste that right there and then save it. And that's your ROMs path all sorted out. This is the set that you want to use and you want to make sure that you're using merged ROMs. Now, because of the age of the emulator, you don't really need to worry about which set that you get these from. All of my pre-configured files are for the parent versions only. So it's only these versions that you want to play with my pre-configuration. And I've done this because I prefer a one game, one ROM basis. SRally P you're not gonna find in a main set as it's a hack. And I've included it because I found it interesting enough to include in the set. Think Sega Rally Remix with a turbo button. If you decide that you want to activate anamorphic widescreen with the games that it works with, just download the widescreen scripts here unzip them and then place them in the scripts folder, making sure to replace any files that are already there. Now there is a widescreen option in the any file. However, this only works half of the time for half of the users and it's never actually worked for me. So it's dependent upon your graphics card, whether you have your graphics card or your monitor set to scale. So it's actually quite unreliable and using Lewis scripts actually yields better results with less popping and less clipping. So if you do want widescreen, definitely use the Lewis scripts over this function here, as it works 100% of the time. After we've done that, if you're using an X input controller, you're good to go. Everything's ready and set up. However, if you're using a D input controller, you are going to need to set your own controls. Now, if you're using a PlayStation controller, just use DS for Windows. It's the quickest and easiest workaround. 
Because the input controllers vary across the board with their input IDs, it's impossible to put out a pre-configuration that's going to be the same for everyone. It would need to be on a per controller basis, and I would need to actually own all of those different controllers to configure for them, and I can't do that unfortunately. So the input is something that I cannot cater for. But that doesn't mean that you still can't use these builds as a base to work from. All you need to do is set your controls from here with everything else being done for you. If you're using an X input controller, the following is not applicable for you. So if you're using a D input controller and you can't use DS for Windows, you need to do the following. Open up the emulator any file, scroll down to the input section, and we want to change X input from one to zero and give that a save close it down and now we want to configure our controls on a per game basis so open up the emulator and we're going to load a ROM I'm going to load over rev as an example because it's got inverted axes so there we go there's the game and now we want to press game and then configure controls and here is the full input list now some of the hard work has been done for you if an analog input has inverted next to it, you want to make sure that you keep it checked as these inputs are actually inverted on the original hardware. So you want to make sure you keep that and you can actually use my layout images to set these controls so everything lines up nice and easy. Just make sure that you do not uncheck any of these checkboxes and you'll be absolutely fine. Unfortunately, with the analog inputs, it just gives you a list of the axes and the rotations, and it's really difficult to figure out what these actually are on a controller. But I'm going to provide a full list of all of these and exactly what they do on a controller in the description below, so you know exactly what you're setting. And don't forget that you have all of these layout images to use as reference. So you can actually use these for your pause menus, for your front ends, reference, or if you're on D input and you need to use them to actually set your controls. So they're there if needed. And apart from that, you are absolutely good to go. Just to give you a brief overview of what this pre-configuration gives you, you get two player mouse support for the light gun games. Now, because this is using raw input, it is resolution specific. So if you change the resolution, it's then going to be inaccurate. I can't tell you how much time and effort actually went into this aspect. And it was a bit more of a headache than I anticipated, but everything is absolutely accurate. So you also get no screen flash for Virtual Cop 1 and 2 and House of the Dead. Controls configured, obviously, unless you're on D input, unfortunately. And all games have been set to free play and are running in English. All test menu fixes have been done. So things like the network board not present issue in Daytona. And I've unlocked any hidden game modes. So things like penalty shootouts for Virtua Striker. And then you've obviously got the anamorphic widescreen Lewis scripts. Now this section here is essentially the documentation. So this is a list of exactly what I've done on a per game basis to get this running as perfectly as possible. And do feel free to have a look over this as a lot of work has gone into it. There we go, that's everything for the Sega Model 2 emulator. Now you might be interested to know that I've done this entire process for the Sega Model 3 emulator, Supermodel, which was 10 times harder and took far, far longer. And in the video I made for it, I totally undersold it. So if you're interested in Sega Model 3, definitely check out that entire pre-configuration. I even had to configure the audio on a per game basis. Apart from that, that's absolutely everything for today's video. And if you appreciate this kind of content, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. And if you want to keep up to date, hit the bell. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.